I'm good. You guys had school today, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. So it's been a couple of weeks. What are we working on today? Um, I honestly don't know. They started something new on Friday, and I was sick on Friday, so I don't know what we're doing. Have you done vectors yet? Uh, no. I'm looking at chapter nine. And chapter nine is what you've been working on. Right triangles and trigonometry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, they end chapter nine with vectors. Um, I'm not sure why. I, I think it has to do with the fact, you know, the same way they teach you a little bit of trig and geometry, a little bit more in Algebra 2, and finally the whole course in trig. Well, vectors is similar. In other words, they want to give you a tiny bit of knowledge of vectors in geometry. Maybe. That's why I ask, because I don't know. They may end up skipping vectors entirely. They did. What's that? They did. We're done with Chapter 9. You are? Okay. Let's not go over vectors then. So if you're done with Chapter 9, I would presume Chapter 10, Circles, is coming up next? Um, I assume so. I don't know. I would think, almost certainly. I cannot imagine where else you would go. In fact, I'm amazed that they wait until Chapter 10 to talk about circles. Um, so let's do a little circles tonight. Question is, where do we start? Eh, let's start with terminology. First of all, the most important two things you can know about circles are area and circumference. What's area? Um, the space inside of a shape. Well, no, I mean, what's the area of a circle? The formula? Um, pi r squared. And what's the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. Now notice that with these two formulas, if you have area, you can figure out radius and circumference. If you have circumference, you can figure out radius and area. And if you have radius, you can figure out the other two. So these two formulas pretty much take care of circles, and you only need one of the three pieces of information in order to be able to solve for all three pieces. Now, I noticed that in the book on circles, first of all, there is a center. I don't think you have any question as to what that is. Nope. All radiuses of a circle are equal. In other words, that radius is equal to that radius is equal to that radius is equal to that radius, and so forth. The diameter is merely two radiuses. The diameter has to go through the center of a circle. A chord connects any two points on the circle to one another. That's a chord. <clears throat> a secant is 
is a cord that extends through the circle. And it intersects the circle in two points. So that's a secant line. And finally, a tangent is a line that intersects the circle in one point only. Now, oddly enough, these words tangent and secant have nothing to do with the trig you've just learned. In other words, you just learned about sine, cosine, and tangent. But that tangent definition has nothing to do with this word right here. This is a line that is tangent to a circle or a curve, meaning it intersects it only at one point, as opposed to a secant line, which intersects it at two points, or a chord that merely goes from one edge to the other. Now there's one property of tangent lines that is really important. And that is, if you have a line that's tangent to a circle, and you connect that at that point of tangency to the center of the circle, it always forms a right angle. You cannot not form a right angle. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I have something like this and I try to say that was the point of tangency and I'm going to connect that to the center of the circle there, that's clearly not a right angle. That's impossible. It's only because I didn't draw it properly. Okay, so all tangent lines make right angles with the center of the circle. Now, um, hmm. so that's basically theorem 10.1 is that if you have a tangent line, it makes a right angle. And of course, theorem 10.2 is if this is a right angle, then that is a tangent line. As with most geometry theorems, if one side holds, it's usually an if and only if situation. In other words, if it's tangent, it makes a right angle, and the other is if it makes a right angle, it's tangent. Now, the kind of problems that come up are problems like this. This is 11. That, what's this right here? That's a right angle, right? Because mm -hmm. the bottom is tangent. So, if I said that that was 61, what is the measurement from E to F? So EF will... 61 squared minus 11 squared. Remember what your answer always should start with? Square root. Uh, square root of. Square root of 61. Yes, you're very good with that answer, but you made the very, very common mistake that a lot of people make, which is they don't put the square root around it. So it's the square root of 61 squared minus 11 squared. And that happens to be equal to 60. 
So, in other words, whenever you have triangles involving circles and tangent lines like this, they're always right triangles because this is a tangent line always forms a right angle. So you're always going to be using um, right triangles, and that's one reason right triangles are so important. Now, what if I had this situation here? That line's a tangent line. And this 8 is from here to here. Now, in all fairness, I'll label it the way the drawing did, which is that's also R. Because all radiuses are equal. In other words, the distance from here to here is R, same distance as from here to here. So what equation allows me to solve for R if this is a right angle? Now, in this, this is a little different than a typical right angle that you're solving. So, use the entire Pythagorean theorem to write an equation that governs that triangle. 16 squared plus R squared equals 2R squared. What's that hypotenuse equal to? R plus 8. There you go. R plus 8 squared. Now I have one side squared plus another side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And now let's just have a little algebra practice here. Notice that we do have one equation, one unknown. Hopefully uh, it looks like it could be a quadratic, so we might have two solutions, but we're going to take the positive solution only if we do have two solutions, and we may not have two solutions. So what's the next step for solving this? Um, let's see. Let me get my calculator here. 16 times 16 is 256. Help me do the algebra. Plus R squared equals R squared plus 64. Don't make that most common mistake made in algebra. What's R plus 8 times R plus 8? Oh, plus 8R equals plus another 8R, plus 64. So when you expand that, it's actually R squared plus 2 times R times 8, that's 16R, combining those two, plus 64. And it truly is the most common mistake made in algebra is somebody saying that x plus 1 squared equals x squared plus 1. It does not. Yeah. Okay. In fact, you, could, you, you should memorize what a plus b squared is. Let's just go over that, just because it's so important. We have a plus b and we have a minus b where A and B can be pretty much anything. What's A plus B squared equal to? And it's a good thing to memorize this. Rather than have to do the calculations every time, it's just better to memorize it. And the only reason I say that is because you're going to come across it so many times. 
uh, over the next couple of years. This, these kind of things are like solving right triangles or like the 3060 right triangle. It's just something you're going to come across again and again and again and again. So if you can figure out a shortcut for doing this rather than actually having to foil it, it's quite helpful. So what's A plus B quantity squared equal to? Um, yeah. A squared plus... It ends up maybe. being 2AB. And plus B squared. Right. And notice how that applied to our R plus A. In other words, the first term was r squared. The middle term was 2 times r times a, or 2 times a times b. And then finally, the third term is this term squared. And the only difference when we have a minus b squared, it's exactly the same thing, only the middle term has a negative sign instead of a positive sign. But he, the third term, is still positive. In other words, there's not a lot of difference between these two. The only difference whatsoever is the sign of the middle term. If this was r minus 8 squared, then we'd have r squared minus 16r plus 64. Okay. So knowing these two things here is... Let's just follow up on that for a moment. If I had this, what's that going to be equal to? Um, three x squared or nine x squared? Sorry. Um, Minus 24xy um, plus 4y squared, 16y squared, I guess. In other words, this was A, this was B. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is so important. It's not so often that you maybe have to do A plus B, but you frequently have to do two terms and square it. So being able to do it from memory, from memorizing these two things, is, is really valuable. Okay, now let's go back and finish solving this problem. Remember, the problem was to solve for R. What's the next step? Um... Part of the problem with geometry is because it lasts a whole year, you can get a little bit uh, far removed from some of the algebra you learn. And so it's always probably a good idea for us to review algebra as we're doing geometry. I mean, there's plenty of geometry that involves algebra, as this problem illustrates. This is a pure geometry problem, but you have to be able to do algebra to solve it. What's the next step? Subtract the R squared. What's the next step? Subtract the 64. And finally... Divide by 16. It must be 12. So, oh, I must have erased the original problem. But anyway, yeah, so that's how you do it. Um, let me look back in the book here. Well... All right, let's talk about more terminology here. Mm -hmm. 
two points of intersection like that. One point of intersection with tangent circles can be done in two ways. You can have a circle that is tangent to another circle inside, internally tangent, like this. The key is this is only at one point. And you can have circles that are externally tangents, like that. And you can have circles that have no points of intersection, and you can have concentric circles. These are concentric circles. You can also have common tangents. That line is tangent to both circles. That is internal tangent. I don't expect you to really memorize all this, but it might make it easier to remember when your class goes over it. And you have external tangent, like that. I think you can figure out the difference. Um, circles are on opposite sides, opposite sides of the tangent. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure how to explain this. Um, if I was to draw another internal tangent up there, it would be like that. Kind of weaves in between the circles while the extra. There you go. The, the definition is they the internal tangents are going to intersect between the circles, and the external tangents are going to intersect outside of the circle. In other words, these two tangents are going to intersect somewhere over there. Okay. And finally, if I have a circle, this is pretty critical, with two tangent lines that intersect, like that, mm -hmm. these have to be equal to one another. You cannot have two tangent lines that intersect that are not equal to one another. They have to be. And you can kind of see why. Um, in other words, if I were to create the triangles here, that's a right angle. I create the triangle there, that's a right angle. I end up with two congruent triangles. They're both right angles and they both share a common side and have equal, that's equal to that. And so these two triangles have to be congruent, which makes that side equal to that side. And if you have a problem like book gives you a What's the equation I can write? Square root of 11 squared equals... No. What's the relationship between this tangent line and this tangent line? So what's the equation? 
11 equals x squared plus 2. That's it. That's the key. That solves rather easily. x squared equals 9, so x equals 3. And again, in geometry, x if x squared equals 9, x actually equals plus or minus 3. But whenever you're dealing in dimensions, you always throw out the negative dimension. So okay. I don't count the negative. I know the answer has to be plus 3. Okay. Problem with that is after a year of geometry, you talk to any math student and you ask them, what's the answer to this problem? And they will tell you 3. <laughs> because they've been dealing with positive dimensions for a full year. Whereas... In algebra, the answer to that is plus or minus 3. Mm, that's pretty good for this subchapter. That's subchapter 10.1. And I'm sure that that's probably where you're going to begin next. They completely skipped factors. And you're sure you're done with Chapter 9? Mm-hmm. Okay. Not surprised. Everybody hates factors, including me. But maybe that's why they decided to introduce it in geometry. You know, give you a little bit of, of vectors in geometry, but apparently not in your geometry class. So. All right. Everything else going good? You still getting good scores in your quizzes? Yeah, I am. Good. You going to get an A in geometry this semester? I'm going to try. I bet you can. Cole, you got yeah. good math skills. I got lots and lots of students, and you got better math skills than most of them. All right, thank I've you. I've always been, well, I've always been a little surprised from the moment I got called in to start helping you. Is It always seemed like your math skills were pretty good. I never really understood why you had problems with it. I, it. You always seemed to me like you should be an A or a B student in math. And I I mean, I don't know if you thought about what you're going to major in in college or anything, but I definitely think you got the kind of math skills that you could go into one of the STEM if you wanted to, you know, science, technology, engineering, or math. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that about all my students, but you definitely uh, have decent math skills that are appear to be getting better. So thank you. Yeah, no. So it's definitely something that you should uh, focus on and 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 try to get that A. There's a big difference in getting an A and a B. Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna try. All right, Cole. I will talk to you next Monday. Have a good week. All right, you too.